Hey, how you doing? My name is Brad Harrison, B-R-A-D-H-A-R-R-I-S-O-N. I'm here today to ask Daniel Cameron and to request that a special prosecutor be assigned to the Breonna Taylor investigation. We do not feel that Daniel Cameron gave an honest effort in this, in this investigation to represent the life of Breonna Taylor. The grand jury, the grand jury hearing was heavily, heavily weighted to favor law enforcement. This was not the goal of the investigation. If you listen to the grand, if you listen to the grand jury recordings, it gives a version, it plays the PIU investigation, which is basically internal affairs. It plays the statements that officers gave to PIU. It gives the grand jurors the perception through the law enforcement investigators eyes. It's, it's a police narrative. The entire grand jury proceeding was a narrative of the LMPD officers that were on the scene that night. Furthermore, one of the most egregious acts that occurred during this investigation is that Daniel Cameron did not include the investigation leading up to the search warrant. The grand jurors heard nothing about that. In fact, Daniel Cameron says that part of the investigation has been passed to the FBI. The entire investigation was flawed from the beginning. And I'll give you an example. During the, during the grand jury, during the press conference, Daniel Cameron made a false statement about the investigation. Daniel Cameron and Detective, or Sergeant, excuse me, Sergeant John Mattingly both claim that Mattingly was not a part of the initial investigation that led to the search warrant. That is false. And we have evidence that that is false. Daniel Cameron had evidence that that is false. Daniel Cameron states at seven minutes and 22 seconds into his press conference, Daniel Cameron says Sergeant Mattingly and Detective Cosgrove and Hankerson, excuse me, Sergeant Mattingly and Detectives Cosgrove and Hankerson had no involvement in the preceding investigation or obtainment of the search warrant. They were called into duty as extra personnel to effectuate the service of the warrant. They only had information conveyed to them during their prior briefing. However, during the course of this investigation, they interviewed, PIU interviewed one of the SWAT detectives. SWAT was not, a, this entire investigation was a farce. You had five search warrants. You had five no-knock search warrants requested by Detective Joshua James, who has seemed to escape public criticism, but he should be the main person on trial here. But you had Detective Joshua James, who, who apparently led this investigation, or was instrumental in leading this investigation. Joshua James, Joshua James, Joshua James is the person that signed the affidavit for five search warrants for Judge Mary Shaw. Joshua James is also the person that listed on the search warrant that uh, the, the U.S. Postal Inspectors determined that there were pa suspicious packages or packages containing drugs going to Breonna Taylor's apartment. That is false. And I give you this statement here from SWAT. SWAT investigators were not aware of Brianna's, Brianna Taylor's apartment being searched. SWAT typically handles the raids at these no-knock search warrants. So what these detectives did was they wanted to do six or seven search warrants at one time. They contacted SWAT. SWAT said no. SWAT said no. That's too many to do at one time. We'll do two one day, two another day, and two a following day. So they agreed to do two search warrants on Elliott Street. SWAT prepares. SWAT does their own briefing because they said they don't trust LMPD's detectives. Often they're told that there's no kids and do dogs in the home. They find there's kids and dogs there. So SWAT gets the information about a month out. They go out, they carry out their investigations, and then they proceed. SWAT is aware of the two homes on Elliott Street. The night of March 12th, SWAT proceeds to Elliott Street. They enter the two houses on Elliott. They're approximately two to three minutes in to their entry, and they hear over the radio that there's shots fired out on Springfield Drive, which is Brianna Taylor's apartment. They, are, they have no idea 
this raid on Springfield Drive is taking place because the seven officers under Joshua James did not inform them. They raid Brianna Tay's apartment. They hear shots fired. They leave Elliot to go assist. They arrive on the scene 20 minutes later. When SWAT leaves the investigation, they leave. They stay. At the, they stay at the crime scene maybe 20 minutes, get it cleared, and they talk amongst themselves. And they're immediately suspicious. Immediately suspicious. They they thought something bad happened there. So during the PIU investigation, SWAT commander gave this statement. <clears throat> He said, let me, let me get to this baby. Sure, the lies. Back in the beginning of the investigation, back in January, back in January, Sergeant Mattingly, Sergeant Mattingly, was at, he asked Sergeant Sawyer and Kuzma of the Shively Police Department to inquire about packages going to Breonna Taylor's apartment. The Postal Service relayed the information that, that the address had no package history. On two separate occasions, they were asked. Shivey Police was asked on two separate occasions by Mattingly and another detective under the instruction of Joshua James to ask the postal inspector about packages going to this house. On both occasions, the postal inspector said the house had no package history. This is important because Sergeant Mattingly is participating in the investigation leading up to the search warrant. But Daniel Cameron and Madley claim that he did not have any participation in that investigation. Therefore, they didn't even investigate the part of why the search warrant was obtained. Bottom line is, these officers should not have been at Breonna Taylor's home. They gave false information to get these search warrants. These search warrants were obtained illegally. Judge Murray Shaw may not have issued the search warrants without the information regarding the packages coming from the post office. On the search warrant, Joshua James wrote that they determined from the postal inspector there were suspicious packages containing drugs going to that residence for Jamarcus Glover. That is totally false. This investigation, the grand jury hearings, should have included the information leading up to the search warrants being that Mattingly took place in this. This appears that you have a rogue group of officers, maybe seven or eight officers, that have their own team that do what they want to do. They did not inform SWAT of what was taking place because it is, it is my assumption that something suspicious was taking place. Now I looked at, I, 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 I saw when Mayor Fisher, when Mayor Fisher uh, announced his, uh, announced that they were doing uh, changes to LMPD with the Breonna Taylor settlement. He announced there were changes. One of those changes, if you look at it, was the uh, uh, chain of command of how they collect money. That was one of the big, one of the big changes. There's a chain, there's a chain of command now of how they collect money. So I asked myself, what did money have to do with this? It, it appears to me that these officers may be going out to Breonna Taylor's apartment, assuming that Jamarcus Glover had cash out there. Why would they not include SWAT in the rain? Why two minutes before going to her apartment, they send EMS away? Because I believe these seven officers were going there to rob Breonna Taylor's home. Yeah. We asked for an investigate. Uh, we asked for a special prosecutor to be appointed to investigate the full, the full, full information regarding the Breonna Taylor investigation. No disrespect to Daniel Cameron, but I feel there's a bias there. When Daniel Cameron was running for office, he was, a, he was endorsed by the FOP. When you have law enforcement under investigation, possibly under criminal charges, an attorney general that represents the FOP should not be heading the investigation. Thank you, people. So we, we have to be clear, because we are the Kentucky Alliance Against Racists, 